Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to go over the technique of using Speedball's screen drawing fluid and screen filler to create a screen print. Okay, so uh, for this project, I have everything set up like I, like I need to to print. I've got uh, my paper is prepared. I've got uh, some buckets for some water, my squeegee ready, a bunch of tape, all of that stuff. Everything that I would normally need to print is ready to go. I have my screen and my press and it's all clamped off. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is make a bunch of polka dots uh, on a bunch of different papers that I'm going to use later in projects for collage and uh, uh, mixed media paintings. And so for that's what I'm going to do with this project. Um, and so I've uh, put down some grid paper down here to help me create a grid of polka dots. So a little about this, uh, these materials. Um, here is the uh, screen drawing fluid and the screen filler. These are this is like uh, peanut butter and jelly, so to speak. Um, and for the for the technique to work, I need to uh, just very simply paint this onto wherever I want the ink to flow through. So you got to kind of think in a in terms of a positive negative space relationship uh, or um, maybe something like that but th for those of you who have done uh, intaglio printmaking this is a lot like sugar lift if you've ever done one of those where you put the material where you paint the material on it eventually is going to be what prints um, so um, it's uh, blue in color and aha here we are I've got some ready to uh, paint on here, and I'm going to make a grid of polka dots. So the next step, I'm going to paint these polka dots on, let them dry, and then I'll come back uh, and, and do some more filming show you what that looks like. But the next step uh, as we move forward is going to be, uh, after this dries, to put in the screen filler and... Um, then we'll wash this, let all of that dry, and then we'll wash this out with some water, and that'll leave this open. And uh, if that doesn't make sense, it will here in just a few minutes. So I'll be back right with you. All right, so I got these uh, dots painted on, and um, they're dry. It took a little while, and I got impatient, so I got the blow dryer out, uh, hair dryer out, and uh, just put it on non-hot and blew some air across it to dry it. I am not a patient man, as you probably know. So um, the reason I didn't put the heat on it is sometimes the heat can tighten up the screen enough to tear it. So be careful about that if you are impatient like myself. Um, so a, a couple of things to look at here um, that now that I've painted these things on. Um, I've got a, I got a few drips in here, like that, and a few places... Oh, like, where is it that, um, where things drip where I don't want them. And that's not going to be a problem because I'll be able to use the screen filler, which I'll show you how to use right now, um, to fill those in. So uh, nothing to sweat about. But anyway, um, there we go. That's That step is done. This stuff is dry to the touch, and, and you've got to get it dry to the touch before you put this other stuff on. So it does take a little bit of time and patience. Um, so um, I'm going to paint this stuff on now. There are a couple of ways to apply the screen filler. Um, and uh, one of the things to be aware of is that if you're not careful, you can glue this top to the bottle. And I just had, I, here we go, I got it off. So, here it is. Well, you can't see in there. It's sort of a brown liquid. Um, some people will uh, put it up and cart it on uh, to the screen, or even squeegee it onto the screen. You get a nice, clean, smooth layer like that. Some people will directly paint it on. The, um, the, Medium is really versatile and can be used for a lot of things, including uh, reductive color screen prints, which is a technique 
that um, I encourage you all to mess around with. Um, it's a great multiple color, multiple layer option. I learned to do that from the great and wonderful uh, Matthew Hobson Walker, who I'm going to give a shout out to as one of the great printmaking teachers around. Uh, but, so, what I want to do is put this stuff on. I need to keep it very, very uh, thin. It needs to be thick enough, but not too thick. If it's too thick, it will become problematic when I am uh, printing. If it is too thin, the uh, ink will break it down and print through spots, and I don't want that. So I'll try and get a good visual of uh, get a good visual of it after I have this all painted on here. I'm gonna pull out any of those strokes. And I can't be too aggressive with this or I'm just going to actually lift out the um, the drawing fluid. So I'll leave it like that. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let me take this out of the thing here and, uh, and show you what that looks like. So that that's pretty good there. Um, I'm going to call it good, let it dry, and then I'll show you how to wash out that drawing fluid after this sets up. I didn't mention the necessity to clean your, uh, your brushes um, and whatever else you get this stuff on uh, before they dry. This stuff will uh, be absolutely destructive and never uh, uh, be forgiving with, uh, if you leave it drying in your brushes. They'll be done. So uh, don't forget to do that as I just almost did. Otherwise, bye-bye brush. So I, this is dry now. You can see that it's all set up, dried off. And so I'm ready to take it. I'm going to take it into the bathtub right now um, and uh, put some warm water on it and uh, lift that out. So here we go. There we are. Turn some lights on. All right, sorry about all that. Okay. I'm gonna get some water on this and just kind of uh, patiently lift that out, and you can see where that drawing fluid is beginning to lift out. Now I need to be patient about this, I can't get too crazy and scrub it out. And, uh, I don't want my tape to lift off either, but uh, you can see that it's all cleaning up. So I'm going to spend a few minutes doing this, show you what it look like, look, looks like when it's done, and then we can begin to print. So I got this cleaned out as well as possible, um, as you can see. And one of the uh, things um, that I did that I probably shouldn't have done when I was uh, brushing on the... Uh, a screen filler. Well, I was too aggressive with it, and I ended up lifting out some of the drawing fluid in some of these spaces. So the the circles in some spots uh, got filled in a little bit with the drawing fluid. So I don't recommend doing that. I got busy chit chatting and got too uh, assertive with it there in the middle. So that's what is happening. But what I'm doing though, I kind of like that uh, random brokenness. So I'm not even going to fill it in. If I did want to uh, fill these spots in and correct the uh, edges there, I could come back in with a, with a brush and repaint those spots in that uh, are um, are open where I don't want them to be, and I could remake those round again. But uh, I'm going to just go ahead with it and, and begin to print. What I'm planning on doing with this project is uh, a, a reductive process where my first layer I've decided to print in a, um, a cyan 
because I have that laying around. I want some blue uh, to go down first. I'm going to print that cyan layer. And then I'm going to print four or five layers on top. And I'm going to, between each layer, I'm going to paint out or reduce the size of these circles in a way that will be dictated randomly by the roll of the dice. Um, so uh, I'm going to start uh, getting this print done. I'll, I'll print one or two and then show you. Then I'll come back toward the end of the uh, process and show you what they're looking like. Um, let me be more clear while I'm, while I'm at it. When I say reduce the size of these, I mean after I print this first layer in blue, I'm going to come in, uh, clean this screen, not take the screen filler out, and paint out some of this. And I'll come back. Actually, I'll come back and show you that so I'm being uh, as clear as a bell about that. So, But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and start laying down some color. I've got the color mixed up. I've got my squeegee. I've got the paper. I've got everything laid out here. I am going to utilize a flop uh, for registration purposes, but I have taped off this so that I know where to lay this paper uh, that is all cut the same size. Um, and uh, go ahead and put down a little bit of spray fixative to make sure that this doesn't move a whole lot. Put some of that tack off there. Now, here we go. Excellent. And perfect. All right. Get on out there, color. Remember, hold this from the center. Flood. And print. Flood, tap that off, and here we go. Come on up, baby. There we are. Layer one of some cyan polka dots. All right, I'll come back after I get a bunch of these printed and uh, demonstrate how to uh, em embark, let's say, on the adventure of reductive screen printing. So, a uh, quick brief tip here. So I want to print on this distressed paper. This paper's been dyed and then bleached, and then scraped into um, several times. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and print into it. It's obviously a different size than what I was printing on before, which is what this flop is for. So this 7 mil acetate that's taped down here flops down and flops back up. I've printed on it so I can pull this back up and see exactly where the uh, image is going to lay onto this paper. And I'm going to use this again when it comes to registering the next layers that will go on top of this color. But for here, I wanted to use this to see exactly where I need to position this color paper before I print it. And that now make sure it's secure and uh, grip them and rip them. Boom. And there you go. So I've got those uh, polka dots placed where they should be. Looks pretty cool, just even by itself. Hmm. Okay, so um, I'm going to re-demonstrate uh, how to clean this up and prepare for the next one real quickly. So if you know this, uh, skip ahead. If you need a little review, here we go. Um, I'm just going to take this uh, excess ink here and... Um, let me make sure I'm in the picture plane here. But uh, got my little spatula. Scoop this down into the ink so I can keep this and print with it later. And oops, I printed on my print. It's all right. This, by the way, this uh, here is a etching demo, demo I did for etching class a long time ago, and then uh, I. I have dyed the paper and now I'm printing over the top of it. I never waste anything. It's always good later on to see what can happen in experiments like this. And um, so there is that. Anyway, come back to that. Clean the sink up here. 
I'm going to leave the screen attached right here and use my handy dandy scraper to pull all this ink off and then Let's see, I've got my sponge, some water, since that's all taped off on the top with that white tape, it cleans up really nice, easily and efficiently. And off the back as well, clean this up. And uh, I'm going to scrub this screen out a little bit more with some wet water, let it dry so that I can uh, go on to the next step, and I'll be back. All right, ready to go on to round two of this uh, to uh, reduce this or get ready for the reduction part. Um, I'm going to apply some more screen filler here. And uh, before I use it, shake it up real well, make sure it's good mixed up. And also... Um, one thing to keep in mind with this stuff is to keep the, the rim of the top and the sides here clean as possible. Otherwise, it will glue itself shut, and it is a bear to get open. Um, I'm going to put a little bit in a souffle cup to use while I'm doing this. So... Uh, when I paint this stuff into my uh, uh, drawing here, it is going to dry, of course, and then inhibit the uh, color from going through. And I'm going to register this right over the, the uh, cyan that I printed. So wherever I paint this is going to keep the cyan color, the cyan color. Um, and uh, the, the next color that I use, which I think is going to be a, a sort of a light medium value gray uh, in there too. Anyway, is going to show up. So I'll have the blue and the gray, and then I'm going to do this four times. So um, in keeping with my my fascination right now with all things Dada and random, I have uh, given myself a little six-sided dice roll here about how I'm going to paint out each of these. So a uh, roll of one would be I'm going to paint out the top left, two top right, and so on and so forth. So I'll paint a couple out and show you what I'm up to, and then uh, 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 get back to it later on. So I just rolled a four, which means I'm going to paint out the bottom half of this first circle to keep that cyan. So here we go. So there... Second one, also a four. Both of those are the same. See, a one, paint out the left half, and so forth. So when I paint this out, I want to be sure to get enough into the screen that it fills the pores up. I don't want to leave a bunch of, uh, of it. I don't want mounds of it that are going to cause problems when I'm pulling the squeegee over the top of them. So that's just something to keep it clear. Some people will actually paint from the back side. They, they prefer to do that They because you're not going to pull the squeegee over the top, and that works just fine as well. Some people will paint both sides if they're very particular or pulling long runs. Uh, for what I'm doing, I'm not going to worry about it. If this breaks down a little bit, it'll add to the randomness and textural quality that I'm looking at. So that's what I'm up to. I'll finish this out, come back, and uh, print the next layer so you can see what's happening. And after that, it becomes, uh, it, the, you know, it starts to click in your brain what you're up to and uh, pretty easy to go for. So I'll, be, I'll be back in just a second, your time. All right, so I got all of my randomly painted out bits done and this is dry and it's really important to let the, um, the material, the medium, dry fully before I go and print on it. If it's still wet, the uh, uh, moisture in the ink is going to break this down and eventually lift it out and um, undo everything that has been done. So really important to let that fully set up 
and uh, I am going to uh, go ahead and begin to print this. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to print it on the flop. So I'm going to clean off the uh, ink from the last print on there. This is a nice thing about a nice uh, thicker acetate. Seven mil is my favorite. Nine mil works great. Five mil will work in a pinch, but it is pretty thin and uh, can can bunch up and cause problems. Get wrinkly. Don't want that. Don't want a wrinkly flop. All right. Let this dry a touch. Feels good. And I have a nice light value gray ink here. Think over the process of this layer. I'm going to introduce uh, several different values of gray so I get some variation, maybe some mono printing in on this layer. Um, but that's to come. First thing first, print fly. There we go. All ready. And that will allow me to, with uh, these prints that are uh, not the regular size, to lay this under here and get that registered exactly where it needs to go to line up and register with the previous layer. Come on, baby. Lay down here. Of voila. I love that. So, Beauty. Okay, so here we are, layer two. So I'm reducing uh, from one layer to the next the amount of ink on the bottom ones that show up on the top. And um, I'm going to go ahead, I turn this off, finish printing this layer out, and uh, get back with you. I'm going to uh, do another die, random die roll and paint these down again. Show you what that looks like back in a few. So <clears throat> this is all cleaned up. I have again reduced the size of these shapes by painting out um, portions of them according to my uh, the die rolls and uh, I'll show you what uh, these look like after the last printing. So we now have blue and this sort of uh, light silvery gray and um, I'm going to be adding some magenta on top of it with this. So you, you can see this top circle here now uh, divided into two um, and uh, there the uh, circle here in the corner right there that's now just this top corner that's going to be where that uh, little corner of um, magenta is going to be. So I've reduced that circle now down just to a quarter and uh, this one will be that sort of half moon shape, etc., etc. So this is what is meant by reductive uh, screen printing or same kind of technique with uh, woodcut and other uh, forms of, of printmaking. Um, I'm going to go ahead um, and print this just like normal and I won't show you all of that. You know what you're up to there. Um, and then I will come back and show you what this looks like after this stage. So I have uh, printed that magenta layer, and you can see here uh, four different examples on the four different papers, and how the paper itself changes the presentation of the way that the forms and the ink color look. Um, uh, some of them are more successful than others. Uh, this, let's see here, that's an interesting sheet of paper. This was a magenta dyed sheet of... Uh, um, I think Stonehenge, 
uh, where the dye, the paper was left in the dye for a couple of days and it, it evaporated and left this sort of oxidized layer on it. But anyway, that looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to keep uh, a few of these. A lot of the rest, like I said at the beginning of the demo, are going to be used for collages. Um, and so uh, I'm going to do a demo for that here in a couple of days and show you my uh, the way that I, I like to uh, incorporate collage into some mixed media work. But uh, I'll finish this up for now. You get the idea of how to utilize the drawing fluid, the screen filler, and uh, to create sort of a reductive screen print. Hope you're all well. Stay safe.